you know, as I leave it, I begin to realize that we really haven't done such a bad job. Um, the the death of a working man's life in a big American hospital does not have to be the traumatic agony that people assume that it is. And so we've done maybe a little better a job than we thought we've done. And I think that we need, oh, my fellow conspiratorians, to recognize this. And yeah, we're not doing such a bad job for the world. And if maybe a few more conspirators out there would realize that we're... What is this conspiracy? It's a <laughs> conspiracy of geniality and hope. And... Um, we need to investigate it some more because I don't think we're doing as bad a job at it as people seem to think we maybe are. And if that sounds too soppy or too, you know, front-loaded, workman-wise, screw it. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're not we're not doing as bad as they claim we are. And so let's hear it for the fucking human race. Yeah! Yeah, look at him. It doesn't look good with you right now. I know. Go ahead, you can handicap most of So, so how has uh, Dell's work, Dell's life influenced your work? Uh, Dell told me a great thing. When I first started out at Second City, he was our director, and uh, I used to sort of get by on winking at the audience, kind of, in my behavior, and making, like, smart jokes. And Dell pulled me aside one day after a show and said, someday you're going to look in the mirror and say, I'm so cute, and I'm only 45 years old. <laughs> and it sort of sobered me up, you know. It sort of taught me that, you know, there was more to just scoring with the audience that wasn't just about getting a laugh. Uh, Dell taught us the dictum that if you concentrate on making everyone else around you look good, it makes everybody look good. And in a way, you know, taught us uh, like a moral code to go with the kind of behavior, stage behavior that he was teaching us. You know? and, and he was a great complete innovator of the stage behavior that we've all learned and shared, you know, which works in life as well as it does on the stage. You something to be proud of and I didn't know that until I was dying. And that's a nice thing to learn on the last day of your life. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. <laughs> your last party perhaps. And I was talking to Greenberg and it's like, is there anything I've learned? We're here in Chicago. This is the only time I ever had a real money was when I got to New York. But I found that it was better to have no money in New York than to have some money. You guys live really well, really good. A real good. In the middle, we were just getting killed all the time. And that at the bottom, economic uh, footstool of life in New York, and it was always better to be there because you had all your time for it. You could live. All your time was to explore and explore. That's fun. But uh, I am um, just wait to get shot. Thank you. I don't know. You may be right, but uh, it's hard to know. It's really hard to know. Um, I feel like I. Just, uh, 
a real good shot at a really good player. Took advantage of it. Okay. Well, <coughs> what can I get? Oh, that's that's what Martini is talking about. Where is it? 